afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard. Hope you're having a wonderful afternoon this Thursday. We have an exciting show, ladies and gentlemen. This is one of the funniest men alive has stopped by the Sherrard Show. I'm so honored to have him on. Uh, the legendary comic and actor, Mr. Tommy Davidson, but we're going to get to him in one moment. But before we get started, the Sherrard Show is brought to you by Essence Television. Essence Television is the network for the Sherrard Show. You can check out some of the best episodes of your life, such as the Manhattan, Smokey Robinson, Robert De Niro. You can even check out this episode by Tommy Davidson on, on Essence Television. Look right on your monitor, ladies and gentlemen. You see it, add it to your Roku or your device, and you can be able to watch the best episodes of your life. And it's also brought to you by iHeartRadio, ladies and gentlemen. If you missed this episode on television, you can also listen to it on iHeartRadio. Just add iHeartRadio to your smart device as your Roku as well. And again, you can hear and listen to the best episodes of your life. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're in a um, time where we just love laughing. We love laughing at great things, great humor, as well as classy humor. At least I know I do. And this gentleman, he has been in my living room for many, many years, from In Living Color to Between Brothers to Malcolm and Eddie to one of my favorite movies, Strictly Business. Also, um, to being on The Proud Family, Booty Call Bamboozled. He is a legend in the industry, and he's here on The Sherrod Show for our special afternoon conversation entitled Changing lives one joke at a time. The legendary Mr. Tavi Davidson. How are you, sir? What's up? So glad How y'all doing, you. man? <laughs> We're doing great. We're so happy to yeah. have you on. Tommy, yeah. you have been in the industry for so many years. Um, you've been a busy man. Tell us a little bit about your longevity. How have you been able to stay so relevant after all these years? Uh, mortgage payment and child support. <laughs> to start out. You know what I mean? <laughs> To start out with, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and then after, you know, but before that, before, you know, before the stuff that ain't going to go nowhere, it's the fact that I love it. I love it and always have loved it. I loved it before I can do it as a job. You know, so it's my love for this business. It's my love for entertainment that I think has given me my, my longevity because there's a lot of reasons to walk away, you know, if it, you know, usually if something gets you uh, 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 uninspired or frustrated or angry or, or, or confused, you know, you can just move into another situation where that stuff's not happening, you know? But if you have an interest in it and you have a commitment to it, you know, it becomes a way of life. So the, I think that's, not think, that's my reason. That's my reason, you know? Yeah. And I'm, I'm inspired by, by everything around me now. I'm inspired by everything to come. And I'm also inspired by what has already happened. So I'm in the right place. It's Thursday. You, you know, Tommy, it's amazing because um, you have opened up for a lot of big people when you were just starting off in your career, like Patti LaBelle and Luther Vandross doing stand-up comedy and things of that sort. And then all of a sudden your career took off. Now, you were just mentioned a moment ago how sometimes things kind of frustrate you and make you want to quit. Mm -hmm. But your love of it has just really permeated to make you keep going. But why today it seems like people really aren't sticking to things like you have in your illustrious career? Well, you know, I can't say individually for someone, but, you know, like I said, when those things are at play, you, you seek a more comfortable situation. You know what I mean? And this, this business that I'm in is really complex. You know, it's really complex. So I say you either have to really love it or you just want to seek mastery, you know? And so, you know, and that comes from how are you inspired? You know, what about this makes you love it? And what about this makes me love it is that everybody that I watched growing up, man, they were bad. They made you want to do this. You know, I'm talking about the Jackson Five, the Silvers, Black Ivory, Flip Wilson, to show you know what's happening you know i could keep going you know i could even go as far as saying you know i love lucy and mikhail's navy and you know the oh, you're going real oh wow you're going back <laughs> as far as the poseidon adventure goes too you know so 
all of it is 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 packed in one. You know, it was the one thing that I was more attracted to than school. You know, it was oh, wow. to get back to the cartoons or to get back to the TV, to get back to the music, you know? But you know, Tommy, one thing that's interesting is that um, one of my all time favorite, and you just mentioned it, um, What's Happening, um, and then also Sanford and Son are two of the funniest sitcoms you ever see. But uh, when A Living Color came along, you know, you duplicated um, or even taken, took even further what we saw on Sanford and Son when so many um, sitcoms and so many shows were not able to do this. What was your secret with that? You know, because you had some of the funniest skits. You did a, a perfect rendition of of um, Sammy Davis Jr. And then, um, thank you, thank you, man. And, <laughs> and I just want to say to you, Sherrod, that that that's the bomb. What you just pointed out. Mm -hmm. So um, that that's to you and Essence TV and all the guys that you that you mentioned. I mean, and I'm saying that with half an eye. <laughs> but but then you did one of the funniest skits when you and David Allen Greer were um want to be I forgot my card and bam. Oh, <laughs> all right okay all right sorry sorry I want to hit you with that one you know we were just we were just lucky we came along at the right time mm -hmm. we came along with the right talent we were the right team we had the right leader how could we lose Keenan, Keenan Ivory Wayans was like um, Professor Xavier in the X-Men, you know? He saw all these mutants in comedy, you know? And they were so far out and had these powers, you know? So he took them all together, put them in a danger room, taught them how to work together and said, come on, get in this black jet and let's go. You know what I mean? And that's basically what happened. The black jet was in living color. Well, you know, you know, you know Tommy, um, all of you all were absolutely hilarious. And all of you all um, careers have basically took off um, from Living Colors uh, Runway. Uh, but people don't realize how funny, truly funny Keenan Ivory Wayans is. Um, his stand-up oh. is absolutely <laughs> incredible. Uh, yeah. when, he, when he had his talk show um, um, back in the 90s, his stand-up was the second to none. Don't you agree? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, he's good on every he's good in everything. He's good in everything. You know. What, what what's probably difficult about being him is he's good at so much <laughs> you know it's hard to choose you know he loves talent too you know so it's like you know he's like this big old pinata you know and it's Absolutely. just like he's just full of a whole lot of lot of lot of stuff and well, I'm, well, I'm glad i was a part i'm glad i was a part of it Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. People, I, I know you still to this day get people stopping you talking about in living color because of what it meant to them. Um, I was in high school and we'd go back to school and just talk about, um, you know, Fire Marshal Bill and we talk about you and Wanda and all these. <laughs> that's that's the Black Fire Marshal Bill. That's Fire Marshal Bill. Let me show your ass something. You know. So, so we would talk about that Frenchie and um, Anton and all those because it right, was just right, right. unbelievable. But you know, um, Tommy, one Frenchie thing that you read nice so too. Frenchie was good. So many people envy you, and I see the comments, ladies and gentlemen. So many people envy you because one of the uh, fresh out of uh, in Living Color, one of the best movies I've ever seen was Strictly Business, and you were able to act alongside Holly Berry. Um, and that was one of the greatest films and, and people don't talk about it much, but, you know, tell us a little bit about your inspiration, how you felt doing that film Strictly Business back in the 90s. I had to do that. That was that was um, that was my first starring role. It was a major motion picture. But I picked it. I picked it. I had some choices to do some other type of movies and stuff like that. Um, I picked it because it was like a fantasy man, like Star Wars, you know, it was like, you know, set in a galaxy far, far away, you know, and what I'm talking about is a brother from Harlem getting with a brother from Harvard, getting with a black bank and starting their own business all because of a honey, <laughs> you know, it was beautiful. So that, that was like, 
I pull that off and we got future shock happening. You don't know how many CEOs from companies now, African-American CEOs from companies and, and people that are way up on the ladder in, in, in business come to me and say, that movie was my inspiration to get into this. Wow. You see? So that's the reason why I did it, was for that. And then I loved, I loved the character Bobby, man. Bobby was like me. You know, Bobby was, was from the hood, you know, but was very smart, you know, but, it, but he was his own kind of smart. He was. You know, he was trying, yeah, he's making his own reality and his own his his own morals and ethics. He was trying to make those work for him. Mm -hmm. You dig it? Yeah, it was and nice. So, it was, he was beautiful. He was in the yeah. mail room, smooth, uh, very likable. And, uh -huh. he, and, and, he, and he was just, he had the same street smarts as the gentleman had in bank smarts. Right, right. And one of the things, one of the things that we do as African-Americans is we, we, um, we discredit one or the other. You know, if you ain't got the street smarts, then you ain't, you, you know, you, you ain't black. You know, if you ain't got the book smarts and, and, and all of that, then you don't mean business, you know, and it takes both of them together for us to have the type of success that we need for the future, you know, and we now, are the futures now. That's correct. Now, Tommy, what was it like? And this is uh, from looking at me as a high school kid watching this uh, Strictly mm -hmm. Business. And all of a sudden, Holly Berry comes on the screen. For you, what was it like seeing her in person um, filming and, and, and doing a movie with her? Please tell us. Woo. First of all, there was another actress that had the part and it didn't work out. So they were like, we're going to bring in a new actress and... Tom, we want you to work with her really close because she hadn't done a movie yet, a full length movie yet, you know? Man, they brought her on and said, I was like, this was gonna be no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is gonna be no problem, you know? Mm -hmm. Just to be around her, you know, just such a beautiful woman and, and, and she really wanted it bad too, you know? And was fun and had personality and all these things. So I was like, I can do something with this. You know, wow. and, and we needed her for the film. Mm -hmm. So me, Kevin Hooks, who's the who's the director, very well known director, uh, well known um, actor father, comes from a traditional Black Hollywood family. You know, bringing all of it forward. Me, him, um, and the producers, and we just really bonded together to make Hallie the Bomb. To make oh, her man. the one that you're looking for, you know? That was one of my favorite and, and, films. And it, and it worked. It worked. And uh, Samuel Jackson also, you know? Samuel Jackson in the scenes that were with me. You know, there's a lot of people in that movie that had something to do with that movie that worked directly with me, like Puffy, you know? Puffy was my, was my assistant, but like my partner on the movie. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, and then Andre Harrell. Andre Harrell was the, the music producer. Wow. And I tried to tell, yeah, I tried to tell Andre Harrell, you know, you better put this girl, uh, Mary J. Blige's music in the movie and not just on the soundtrack. Cause she hot, you know what I mean? It was, it was, it was going down like that. You know, Jodeci, that was their first movie. Isaiah Washington, that was his first movie. You know, it was like one of those things. It was, know, nice it was and such smooth. It, nice you know, Tommy, it, it was it was such a clean movie. It didn't have to be all this shooting and all that stuff. It was black people doing some positive things. Absolutely enjoyed that. And then you went on to do um, even bigger things in terms of Booty Call and Bamboozle and a lot of um, other you know uh, sitcoms as well. But I know that you're on a tight schedule, so we got to talk about your book. You see on your monitor, ladies and gentlemen, Living in Color. I, um, I got to get a copy. There we go. There we go. Look at that picture. Movie star looks. Living in Color. Now, tell us a little bit about your book. Actually, the book is uh, about me, but about the world that surrounds me, you know, and, and how I came into the world, you know. I was abandoned in the trash as an infant, uh, found by, by, a, by a white woman, raised with her family, in, um, which is my family, in uh, Fort Collins, Colorado, in Laramie, Wyoming. Then moving to Washington, D.C. In, in 68 during the riots. And what impression that had on my mind and that experience that I had 
being neither black nor white, being hated and despised by both. You know, and how that manifested in my mind and I became what I am and all the lessons along the way. And it's also an account of me hitting Hollywood and that whole trajectory. You know, so it's from from there, from out of high school, you know, but basically what 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 living in color is, is it's two things. It's a blueprint or a map for anyone who is in a quest in their life to learn as much as they can and to do as best as they can. So I put a lot of situations in there that I was able to transcend with the help of others. Wow. And then two, what the book is, is about my mom and about someone who taught me that, you know, racism is an ism and not a wasm, but compared to love is an illusion. So she taught me that giving is getting. And you rarely hear that talked about in this new world of social media. You know, if, 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 if I, if, if, if I punch my wife in the eye, you know, you know, I'd be on the front page, you know, but if, you know, everything is, 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 is beautiful, you know, you will get one like. So, so this is what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with having a, an, an affiliation with social media. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you know, sometimes I wish I could, I could, I could do it better, you know, but the only reason why I, I wish that is, is, is because things are based on popularity now and not value. That's correct. And you got to keep up, you know, but it's not for my personal, you know, personal use, you know, because personally, you know, you start to, you start to look at things a little as a little more important. And what do you base your importance on, you know? And that's the difference between people. I base my importance on how I can help others, how I can grow into a better human, you know? And, and can I maximize my ticket on this ride called life? Well, tell me, where can we get a purchase uh, a copy of the book? I gotta give you a copy. Uh, Amazon is, is probably the best place because you know if you ask for cheese doodles, they'll bring it to your door. Tommy, I want so, an autograph so, yeah. copy. Yeah, you know what I mean? Just give me an address. You know, mm -hmm. we did this show, so you know, and and, and your your arms reach out far. So it's it's to my advantage to make sure that you have it to pass it on. Because Very it's good. it's 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 mm -hmm. Patty LaBelle. She's the one that broke me into the business. Uh, Luther Vandross, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Eddie Murphy, mm -hmm. Arsenio mm -hmm. Hall. I got a lot of help from a lot of people and a lot of good information. Wow. That's, that's the you, kind of stuff we need. You know, Tommy, it's such an honor having you on. I got to be respectful to your time. Um, I hope and pray you can come back on the show. You know, you have other meetings you have to take on. And oh, no like doubt. That. You did. That's why we did it in the first place. Yes, yes, Tommy, really appreciate you being on. One last question, Tommy. What do you have upcoming films, uh, things you have coming that we can look forward to? Uh, me and Martin have a project that's coming on BET. We've been working on that for about throughout the pandemic. It's going to be a good thing. I started my own company. Mm -hmm. So sky's the limit. My own movies, my own music, my own TV, my own animation, my own books, documentaries, whatever it is, stuff that comes from from me. Wow. Tommy, um, my daughter's a huge fan of yours and you all share something very yeah. common. Your birthday's November 10th, hers November 11th. She, nice. uh, she right loves back. it, she loves it. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have yeah. it, the legendary Mr. Tommy Davidson on the Sherrard Show. Thank you so much, sir. You got it, brother. Have a good day, okay? You too now. Bye-bye now. All right. Bye. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Sherrard Show. If you like additional information about our episodes, you can log on to the com. You can also check us out on social media, like us on Facebook, look at our YouTube video, subscribe to our newsletter at Essence Television Networks at gmail.com. If you would like to get information to the host, Sherrod, you can email him at the Once again, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week.